Let's get into the, the big topic of open source. Something that we actually have done. Right. This is so we awesome. We are an open culture that it believes is actually in the place of things that process that a developer or let's say... As the Kubernetes ecosystem really boomed. Good afternoon again, GitOpsians. Um, oh, Jesse, you haven't been around for that, so I'll have to explain that one to you in a second. Um, today is the 31st birthday of Linux. Um, so today's stream is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit casual, a little bit of reminiscing on, on 31 years of Linux. Um, so uh, before I introduced, uh, introduce rather my, my co-host for the day, um, I'm going to just make sure that I announce that ArgoCon uh, is coming up in about three weeks. So September 19th through 21st, um, ArgoCon is happening in Mountain View, California. And um, I will probably be there, I think. It's like, I'm going to say 90% certain that I will be there. Um, so I was just having that conversation yesterday. Um, so uh, if you're going to be there, say hi. Uh, you'll be in my neck of the woods. This is this is local to me. Um, and yeah, other than that, no uh, no other major announcements. I think I had mentioned that I was uh, in uh, in Boston for DevConf, um, which is a free conference that Red Hat hosts. Um, speaking there, so Boston was great. Really cool town. Excellent conference. Um, I think some of the recordings are up, but I, I haven't seen links yet. So if they're not up, they're pending. Um, and I definitely recommend, you know, going through some of those archives and watching some of those talks because they were very cool. Um, but so jumping into today, um, Jesse's been sitting here going, gosh, when is she going to just stop talking for five seconds? Um, uh, people who've watched the stream for a few weeks or months and at this point now like know that I like to brag about my team a lot. Um, so Jesse Sarnofsky is somebody on uh, my team. I'm actually transitioning off of this team onto into a new organization, a new new role. Uh, Jesse will uh, unfortunately have to to take over the reins as as the team lead in my stead. So, um, but we've been working together now uh, pretty much the entire time I've been here at Red Hat, huh, Jesse? Yep, I would say so. You're what six months or so? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think it is exactly your six. Like that was really fast mental math. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so. Um, I'll let Jesse introduce himself, but suffice to say that Jesse, Jesse's been at Red Hat for what, seven years? Seven years, three months, something like that. Um, yeah, so I've been, uh, I joined Red Hat uh, working on some of the, the early managed services uh, from RHMAP to RHMI, to, uh, which is the Red Hat managed integration, uh, OpenShift API management, some more recent ones, Kafka, and pretty much always involved in the engineering or operations related stuff throughout my entire history here. Yeah. Yeah, so um, definitely, definitely, uh, I would say you were a big part of my onboarding to the team and to Red Hat and to everything. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I'm very excited that Jesse's here to talk talk to talk to us about Linux uh, or with me about Linux with us about Linux. Um, and so we're just kind of kicking off. We, we had this kind of little uh, tongue in cheek joke of uh, 31 flavors of Linux in 31 minutes, right? Uh, which is a lie because the stream is an hour and I'm also not going to read 31 Linux build names off. Uh, but we, we found some pretty fun ones. Um, and this kind of, um, I thought about this one because of a meme I saw that was shared to Reddit a while ago to the, the Linux memes subreddit. And it says, uh, like, what your coffee preparation method says about you. Um, and I don't know if uh, Stephanie had that link handy. Uh, to to share that um but um hang on we're getting there here let's try this again maybe maybe it'll show up anyway um that 
top meme. I didn't see that top meme. That's fantastic. Here's the, uh, here's the, uh, here's the, the ingredients. Compile it yourself. But anyway, uh, so the, the, the coffee meme basically was like, what is your coffee preparation method say about you? Right. And it says like, uh, like a standard coffee pot is Debian users. The, um, uh, like an espresso machine is, uh, gen two users, which I have an espresso machine. That's my coffee preparation. Um, I'm not sure if that's accurate. I, I, I actually down, I downloaded the ISO for Gen 2. Um, I downloaded the ISO for Gen 2 completely intending to actually try it out before this stream. Did not get there. Um, right. Uh, the pour over, right. Arch users. Uh, I don't even know what the other one for Fedora is. I like, I love coffee. I'm still not really sure what, what that preparation method is. It's like an, extra fancy pour over i got nothing somebody who knows more about coffee will will hopefully be able to uh, come up with that and then uh, the 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 single single cup uh coffee pod preparation like the keurigs and, and similar uh, being ubuntu is um honestly delightful and so uh that that kind of gave me the idea of doing 31 flavors of, of linux in 31 minutes and um one of my uh, one of my colleagues had said, "Okay, well, wait a minute. I use a French press, so what's my what's my Linux distro?" And uh, I decided Kali, uh, Kali Linux was was this person's Linux distro uh, as a result of the French press. So interest, interested to see if other people feel the same <laughs> about that. Um, but anyway, so yes, thirty one flavors of Linux in thirty one minutes. Uh, we here are the ones we found. Uh, without getting dark, right? I think, Jesse, we, we weren't going to get dark. So, like, Puppy Linux was not on this list. <laughs> Here are the ones we sat, we found, starting with Gen 2, with the the, the icon of being a cow and, and sort of ice cream thematic um, that, that are, are named after food. And, of course, Gen 2 is a type of penguin, but we're ignoring that. Um, so, I had said mint, and then, Jesse, you had said peppermint, right? Yeah, the peppermint, yeah, Linux um i didn't you actually found all of the rest of the really like this great list so like i'll let you go ahead and give the rest of this list off Let's see if i remember all so sugar on a stick which i'll be honest i hadn't heard about it till i looked into it but sounds pretty good uh there was well raspberry pi os is a version of linux uh else the other ones did we come up with we really just came up with peppermint at that point very linux and that's yeah, about all i got yeah yeah so uh, and then, like we said, they were like, okay, well, what else? What's a good segue from here? Um, so the, yeah, like we said, we don't want to get dark, right? Like you could technically, like, sure, we could just go straight into uh, calling things like Puppy Linux and Kali Linux uh, flavors, but that that seemed that seemed maybe a little a little tragic. So um, we did we were did, we did mention the fact that you know a lot of people are Android users. I'm an Android user. Jesse, I think you're an Android user. Yep. Right. So uh, that's Linux. Um, and uh, then you mentioned the Fire OS, right? Yeah, Fire OS. That's uh, Fire Amazon, OS, right? Amazon Kindles. Yeah, Kindles. That's also Linux. Um, and so uh, obviously there are the Red Hat flavors, right? So Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Fedora, CentOS. I'm forgetting one. Um, and uh, there's actually even different flavors of Fedora in and of itself, right? There's Fedora Silver Blue. I don't know if you've seen that one. Uh, it's it's intended for um, like a containerized environments and uh, has uses OS tree and Flatpak as opposed to RPMs. Um, hang on, double checking my dyslexia on that acronym because sometimes I say the right letters in the right in the wrong order. Did I get that? Yeah, RPM package manager. Okay, <laughs> it's like a few weeks ago, months ago now, but a few months ago, right? I was saying, oh, we shouldn't use VPC when I meant PVC. Completely like same letters, wrong order, different meaning. Like this is one of those check my dyslexia moments. I have I have those from time to time, right? So, uh, right. So, and we were talking about this, and uh, I'm I'm gonna let Jesse give me like. Uh, a lot of grief right now. So Jesse has, um, Jesse's a RHEL user, right? He uses RHEL. Um, and 
I have never used Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, if you can believe that. So uh, I'll go, go ahead and let, let Jesse uh, tell us all of the, the ways in which uh, he likes Rail better than Fedora, because he would actually know. So I, as a former uh, CSO and caring about security, uh, I feel the appropriate use of my uh, stuff here at Red Hat would be to use our Rel official corporate standard bill, which is highly secure and well done. Um, unlike most who, uh, a lot of developers like to kind of switch to Fedora. They like a lot more of the, uh, the ability to just get root and just do whatever you want. Um, I can't help but feel like that's a violation of my history. So I, I prefer to stick with Rel. Yeah. Um... You're, you're, you're probably, I, I probably will find myself forced to rel, right? I think that that's that security aspect of it, um, in, in types of situations like with what we do is really going to, uh, really going to be a, um, a mandate. I mean, they always say it's going to be, a, I don't actually think it'll be a mandate. I think it's just going to be become more encouraged. Whereas before they, they didn't actually voice an opinion, but I could be wrong. They could continue to, to let us, let us choose our own. Um, and then there's, of course, the subsets of, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at the comments and Walid is trolling who uses rel. Well, so Walid's been with this stream, like, since it was created a couple years ago, like, very, uh, uh, very long time, uh, long time viewer. And, uh, that, that's Stephanie calling you out for trolling, by the way, Walid. So, like, you're not getting, <laughs> you're not getting by any of us. Um, but yeah, so. And of course, I think like one of the things, like we put it on t-shirts. I couldn't find my t-shirt to wear today. I was going to, right? Now we're saying like containers are Linux, right? Um, containers are Linux. So it's really when we're looking at 31 years of Linux um, and and uh, working for a Linux company and and uh, everywhere that that's, that's kind of changing. I think that that's a fun, it's like a fun reflection. Um I was just reading through the comments and uh, Dave saying that uh, Gen 2 is how he learned Linux. Um, so now I'm like concerned though, right? Because like I downloaded an ISO and I was like, didn't do a ton of research into this because I literally did it because a meme made it sound like it was funny. Um, but now I'm like, really? Because I might have spent 48 hours compiling Gen 2? Or is this like, that's just like back because you chose to do it the hard way? Like I have questions. I have I have really big questions about about the Gen two thing here. Um, and uh, Martin Jackson, as a friend of mine here at Red Hat, is yes, I've I've heard Rel is better. Actually, Jesse, recently you were showing me there was some you had something going on in your terminal, like a nice feature that I was like, why don't I have that? And it was totally a Rel thing. Uh, you know, I have so many little one liners and stuff. I don't even know which one you're referring to. <laughs> Um, oh maybe just the searching history of bash, but I don't think it's a rel thing. I think it's just default on rel where I can search the bash history. No, no. Yeah. Cause I can search my bash history too with the control R, but I think there was something about your search experience that was better. I do think there was something better. Yeah. I probably tweaked so much in here. I don't even remember what all I changed from the beginning. Um, but honestly, so back when I first started trying Linux, I actually went to a computer show and picked up a, uh, disc version of Slackware of Debian, don't even remember the version, and of, uh, I think it was Red Hat 4.1 at the time, RHEL 4.1, and tried to do all those installs. And for some reason, I chose RHEL last just because it actually had a box I had to commit to opening, and the other ones were just little CD cases. But RHEL was the one I successfully installed and actually used RHEL for, honestly, my first probably four years on Linux from that point. So I have a lot of history with RHEL even before coming to Red Hat. Um, I'm not sure where it is. You know, I have a RHEL... Um... I can't remember if it's five or six, I have the, like the, the big book with the disc included and like the disc is in there and the package is completely sealed. Uh, this was given to me for the holidays by my father-in-law um, last, last winter. Um, and you would think, oh, well, maybe since I actually have a physical copy, I would, no, no, I still haven't used RHEL. Um, at this point, the fact that I haven't done it I, is really just... Uh, it's almost a laziness. choice. Yeah, laziness. <laughs> it's a choice. I, I'm sure I'll have to. I'm sure I will go to the corporate build when I do a tech refresh. Um, uh, technically, technically, I have used RHEL, right? The the OpenShift containers, right? They are RHEL. Like that is RHEL. 
kind of. Un he's, Jesse's like shaking his head. I'm giving you like 1% credit on that. That's, that's <laughs> not good enough for me. I'm sorry. I don't know what the, the viewers think, but I, I would say that doesn't count. Sorry. Um, I read Netcat. It was amazing. Okay. I totally used Rel. Um, it was, there was that, that, that nasally Valley girl accent that I always try to hide. Um, that just like really came out in that minute. Um, yes, but I do have the CD-ROM. Um, I, I, I do. I think it's, it's actually behind Link, but like, I'm not moving him <laughs> right now to pull that out, but it's, that's where it is. Um. See, no one believes you. <laughs> no one believes me. No one believes me. Um, I do have it. It's there. He's it's real. Um, but like if I move link, then you're gonna see like all of the like all of the mess that I would normally like let accumulate on my bookshelf is actually I just hide it behind him, right? Like if I'm like, oh, I'm gonna just set this on my shelf and be lazy and just like slide it in behind behind the link picture so that you guys can't see it. <laughs> um, there are there are literally there's a vase with dead flowers behind him. Uh, like it's, I'm not even kidding. Uh, and like, <laughs> I, I just got back out of town from being gone a week and I left, I left, I had a little vase like this with a couple little flowers in it. Um, and I was just like, oh snap, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna slide it. Um, so yeah, but it's, that's like a very long conversation about my <laughs> link, link hides all the things I don't want people to know about. Um, I also lost my glasses back there one time. Yeah. One, wait, one time? One time? One time this week. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, okay, one time this week. He's called me out on this. I lose my glasses all the time. So, uh, but they're like really, 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 really off topic, um, which is supposed to be RHEL, um, or, or Linux in general. So, um, yeah, and so actually, so my, my first, my first Linux box was actually, it was a Linux Mint. Um, it had a very, this was circa 2009. Um, it was a very, it had like one of the best install and setup experiences at the time. And um, at least that I had been exposed to. I'm going to say that I'm gonna, that I'd been exposed to. Um, and overall, just just slightly liked the way they had laid some stuff out better than like I'd also seen Ubuntu. Um, and just like using, using the actual, actual GUI on Mint at the time felt a little bit more, um, but it felt a little bit more natural, I guess is the way that I would say it. Um, and it installed on my ancient, uh, laptop with no problems whatsoever. So that was always really nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I got like my whole Linux career and everything started off with going to a, uh, Linux users group, right? A lug in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles. Um, the person who founded it worked with my, uh, my husband and he invited us to come. And, um, I was like, I don't know what I, at, th at this point I was not a computer nerd. Really. I was not a computer nerd. If, if you could believe that. And, um, I was just like, Oh, I don't know if that's going to really be like interesting to me, but like, well, I'll try it out. Cause you know, I was invited. And so I, I went and I kind of was like, oh, actually this stuff is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so they, they taught me at the Linux user group, uh, how to, how to, you know, make the install, uh, install disk off the thumb drive. And, um, I, then I was running mint for a while before I spent, um, what was it after that? I spent nearly, I guess, 10 years actually using, uh, using OS X after that, which I still, yeah, I know. I know. Right. Okay. OS X is Unix based, right? It is Unix based. BSD based. So I used open BSD too back in the day. And I'll admit that, uh, open BSD and, and pre BSD were pretty good, but, uh, OS X was just a way to steal that and try to commercialize it in my opinion. I mean, I don't disagree with you, but, um, yeah. So, uh, and then, and then after that, I, uh, for a long time I worked on, uh, like for work, I was doing stuff that it had to do with iPhone apps. Like for, for a lot of years I was, I, my work involved iPhone apps. So at work I was using, 
OS X. So it just and ended up being convenient to not have to make a mental like switch between operating systems when I wanted to do something on my personal time. Uh, and then I came to Red Hat and they're like, what kind of operating system do you want? By the way, most of us use Fedora. And I was like, okay, well then I'll just, I'll just put Fedora on it. So they just sent me a box with the tiniest rel partition ever. Uh, so I, I used rel long enough to install Fedora. And, um, now I run Fedora on my personal machine too. So again, I just don't like context shifting between operating systems. I want, I want things to be exactly where I expect them to be when I expect them to be there. Um, I think you're better at the the context shift that, than I am. Well, my history with our computer store back when I was growing up, I mean, I had to fix people's machines and whatever, but however they set their operating system or the windows up or whatever, I had to deal with it. So if the mouse was reversed. I had to learn to use the mouse backwards and had to leave it that way. And I refused to switch it because I knew I'd forget to switch it back. So I have that mentality to keep it the way it is and just work with it. And having known a lot of programming languages that are layered, like working on a web page back with JavaScript, with active server pages behind the scene with VB, and then calling objects in C, just keeping track of all the different contexts. That's that's what I've done my entire life. So it's a little easier for me, I guess. Yeah, well, I've, I've, I've said many times, you're, you're the better engineer between us, like hands down. Um, I'm also the more committed engineer to my team. Yes, the more committed engineer to the team. Uh-huh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I've never, I, this, I show up to meetings for this team, right? I'm transitioning from teams. I've got six weeks left on my, uh, my term of service here on, and, and, uh, every meeting I showed up to this group of people who, uh, you know, claims they want me to stay. Uh, it's like, what are you doing here, trader? No, they don't. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, you're more committed to your team. Okay. Whatever. Uh, but again, I guess I, I think they're definitely the better engineer. Um, somebody was talking about Debian and Debian is, I, I feel like a little bit like I should lose nerd credibility for not spending more time with Debian because, um, I, almost everybody I know loves Debian right? Like my, my mentor who like taught me about programming in Linux and invited me to that ori original Linux user group, right? His name is Brian. Uh, he has been a Debian guy forever, right? Because I mean, and to be fair, like Debian, if you go back to like the open source movement, the open source, um, like, uh, foundation and all that other stuff, like De Debian, like was the like pillar to that, right? Like they, they, they really pioneered it and pushed it and, and then, others sort of came along for the ride with them. So, so we, we have, you know, Debian as a, as a community to thank for a lot of, of what we love about open source as a whole. Um, and I am told that it's also a really amazing operating system and I would really, really like it. And I still have never used it longer than like the five minutes I used it on his computer. And I really don't have any good reason for it. And again, too lazy to put up a virtual machine and just run it separately. You don't have to commit to it these days. You know, you can just run a virtual machine, try oh, it out. It I out. know, I know. You're it's not wrong. Really instead of an engineer, so I would be willing to do that just to try the things. <laughs> I'm so lazy. I'd rather just whine about it. Um, I just am so lazy. Um. Oh my goodness! Hang on. Sorry, I'm just that comment. A MS DOS 6.2. 6 6.2 and 6.22, if I remember, was the exact number on that uh, thing. <laughs> With your summer money. Wow. Wow. Um, so, uh, Dave, you're really going to love to hear that my first operating system was Windows 95. Um, and you're going to love to hear that because you're going to be like, what the heck are you even doing here, you baby? <laughs> Jesse, your face. I was I was hiding the gray hair a little bit, so I didn't <laughs> seem so old. But yeah, I, I, I MS DOS five, I think, was the earliest one I had on uh, like what they call a legitimate floppy disk, the five and a quarters. Which I don't even know if you remember they had those. Uh, back yes, then. I remember them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people like their parents didn't do things that involved having home computers. Or even if their parents did things that involved them having home computers, 
didn't trust their children with them because they were very finicky and uh, easily broken. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, I was around older computers. I was just not allowed to touch them. Uh, so, you know. There we go. See, Windows 98. There is no shame in that. There is no shame in that. So again, some of us did not have access to computers. Our parents didn't run computer stores, Jesse. Yeah, no, hey, my parents just helped us get the computer store. And Barla and I ran the computer store. So I was 15 when we actually uh, started that computer store. Oh my gosh. Two megs of RAM. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember having 128K memory modules at one point and stacking up my Sound Blaster off 32 with, I think, four of those to have like, you know, what is it, uh, half a half a meg of memory on the thing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. See if you can commit eight inch floppies. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I love, I like the comments. Honestly, I could spend the entire time just sitting here watching, watching the comments from this group, because this is, this is like, this is why I wanted to do this particular episode in this particular way, even though it's just kind of, uh, from a me being a host perspective, like it's making me like the laziest host ever today because uh, we are a fairly large community. Um, I think we do have a fairly like good age spread in terms of our our, our viewership, and obviously um, Jesse and I are peers. Uh, you know, he's a little little bit more uh, more years of experience in the industry than I have. Um, so you know, there's there's some really great. Uh, really great opportunity to just kind of reflect on on what what Linux has meant over the last 31 years to everybody um Jesse you're laughing at me again <laughs> no I'm, I'm laughing at the comments because I, I see myself emm386 I don't even know if you know what we're referring to but uh Dave core 82 uh this config sys and auto exec stuff and we used to have different uh QEMM if I remember correctly it was one of the great inventions that let you get access to a little bit more memory or extended memory Oh my God. Reminiscing here. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's exactly the point. We're supposed to be reminiscing. I would like you to reminisce more even. Um, so especially because the folks, a lot of the folks in the comments right now are people that like are other red hatters, right? Martin Jackson, you and Martin love each other. Uh, I just met him at DevConf in Boston and um, he's actually going to be coming on the stream in a few weeks um, to discuss the verified patterns, but that's like a whole spoiler. I'm going to talk about that later. Um, so yeah, so, um, mo most, most people, most people who actually watch this are other red hatters, which is really great. Um, because then you can go find them later and then pick back up the conversation that happened in the little comments here. So, um, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, QEMM is at software that'll increase my, <laughs> nice with the little sunglasses. It I did at one point. Okay. But how did that work? For those of us who were not around in those heydays, how did that work? It's complicated. So, so back when, if you know the standard memory, extended memory, or expanded memory, so the 640K was really what you had for working space for conventional memory. And QEMM did some magic to get like 700K out of that, but it also gave you more expanded memory, uh, which we used to play games back in the MS DOS days. Oh, wait a minute. I have heard of this. You probably had used QEMM and didn't even know it very possibly. Um, yeah. So EMM 3D6. QEMM was a more enhanced version of that. So. Okay. Yes, I have heard of this. This is ringing some bells. Actually, you know who I, I have specifically heard talking about this is uh, my husband and my mentor. Um, again, I mentioned that they, they used to work together, right? And so, um, yes, I've definitely heard them discussing this uh, and, and all of the other ways in which they would... Uh, they would try to to wring every little ounce of efficiency out of their computers so that they could do other things, especially because um, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people can identify with this. Actually, my first computer uh, was built out of spare parts. So right that you get you get uh, you get this hand me down computer. It's like already kind of dated the things you're going to want to do on it. It's not really going to do well. So what do you what do you what do you do to make to make it perform the way you want it to perform? Uh, and yeah, that's exactly one of the types of things that they were discussing, uh, makes the entire hard drive swap partition. Oh man. 
So back in those days, you would install like QEM to get more memory. You'd what run stacker or drive space, whatever, on your uh, hard drive to get extra space or double space. I think it was called in the earlier versions. Um, yeah, and then it would run even slower. But hey, technically, you know, you doubled your space. And I remember going through the effort of setting up stacker on a floppy and then putting it at some insane estimated compression value. So it said I had like five megs of data on this like regular you know floppy disk or something like that. And even though you couldn't really store that much, it looked like it could store that much. It was great. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Um, kind of like way, way down the line. My husband was telling me something about there was something you could do with Windows Vista to make it treat hard drives as if they were memory instead of hard drives, like instead of storage. I think that's it. I'm wondering if anybody remembers what this is, this little trick. I don't think, I don't think Windows Vista was the only place that you could do this. Um, talking about I, really swap wish... space? I mean, the swap space has been around since, honestly, I think it was even Windows for work groups 311. I think they had it. Yeah. I, 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 I um, there's 31 minutes of, of uh, you're right. 31 years of Microsoft. It's a shame on us. Shame on us. Well, that ends up happening, right? When you talk about your first computers. Um, yeah. Oh, I wish I could remember. Yeah. Tempest. So, um, all right. All right. All right. All right. Sorry. Sorry. We'll go back. We'll go back. We're start talking about our first operating systems and that's, that's where we go. Right. That's you you end up down that way. Um, so yeah, some of us use some of us use DOS. Some of us started in Windows. Some of us some of us started in Linux. Um, obviously, we all ended up in Linux, so that tells you something really important. Um, but yeah, so I don't. I was trying to think how many actual builds of Linux, like not even builds, distros of Linux, have I used, right? And understanding that I haven't used RHEL, I think I'd still doing pretty good right i've had uh so obviously fedora right it was called ready boost ha somebody knew it sorry um so understanding that i haven't used rel um let's see i've got uh ubuntu mint obviously fedora um wind river actually i used wind river linux for work um, which is specifically geared towards IoT servers or IoT gateways. Um, and um, that can't be all of them. I know I've used more. I've used Mandrake, Mandriva. I don't remember which order they came in, but one was a successor to the other one. I think Mandriva was the newer one. I ended up using mostly uh, RPM one base. I don't not necessarily because of uh, RHEL, but just that, like it seemed like the easier progression from starting with RHEL four one. Yeah, no, I like I like RPM based as well. Um, oh, CentOS, of course. Um, just, I was sitting there like obviously CentOS for for years. Um, Red, oh wait, wow. Our Hope Nine has been using Red Hat since version two point one when they introduced the RPM uh that's pretty good uh yeah you might win i don't know it's like i'm like waiting for our comments and anybody else to see if they've been using it for longer like you might win that might be the one um steven asks if his first distro was fedora 25 does he count as old um i don't know is the answer because i don't know when you used fedora 25 technically i think you could probably still build that from source today if you wanted to so. no one's ever old they're experienced Oh, is that it? Yeah, you're missing the the deeper meaning here. <laughs> the experienced. Um that feels a little bit condescending, right? I'd rather I'd rather uh like uh, if I, I go I I sometimes explain to people I'll just be like, "Eh, whatever, I'm old." So, you know, I'll be like, "I'm old, so I remember subversion, right?" Uh and then people will be like, "What?" You don't, how are you? Because if I say, well, I'm experienced, so I remember some version, that's, I mean, it just makes me sound awful. <laughs> that's why maybe seasoned is the better word then. Let's go with seasoned. seasoned. Yeah. Seasoned is good. It doesn't sound, yeah, it doesn't sound like you're, you're doing anything. Um, oh, no, we're not even discussing the M1 MacBook Pro. Nope. We're not even, we're not even discussing the M1 MacBook Pro. That's not happening. 
<clears throat> Again, that's a Unix-based system anyway, so whatever. We're not in this room. <laughs> Your face every time I call OS X a Unix-based system. It is, technically. So I don't know how long BSD has been around, but I mean, it's 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 close. I'll give it credit. I mean, I used them both in parallel for their for what they were good for at the time. So. Right, yeah, you use the right tool for the right right thing, right? Um, okay, yeah, and I, I it, Ubuntu 20, it, aren't we past 20 on Ubuntu now? I'd have to look it up, but Ubuntu 20 came out quite a few years ago. I feel like we, we should be upgrading past 20. Um, if you're old, you used RCS. Yeah. Okay. 22.04 came out recently on Ubuntu. Okay. Okay. I thought I was not, I remember when 20 came out because I remember I had to migrate a bunch of stuff from, from, um, 18 to 20 actually. So I was like, I know that was, I, cause I was like, that's, we gotta be past it. Right. We gotta be past it. So yeah, we're good. Um, I haven't heard of Nopix. Sorry. I'm like just reading the comments at this point. These comments are great. I wish you all could just be on here talking with me instead of, instead of commenting, but I'll take what I can get. Um, have you heard of Nopix, Jesse? Yeah. So it wasn't Nopix was a derision, derision of a uh, Debian that ended up with a huge amount of dip distros that came out of that, if I remember correctly. I almost, I think I've heard about it more and never actually use it directly, but a lot of them you've used derived from it. You didn't realize it. Yeah, I think that when we were we were looking this up earlier on the Wikipedia, right? And there was like basically several different categories of Linux distros and then like each flavor within the category, right? I want to like I like kind of like maybe I'm just going to like wander back over to the Wikipedia. That's what I'm looking maybe. at now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? At least go a lot wander back to our Wikipedia page over there. Um Gen2 still uses RCS, right? Okay. That's what it was. Dave's right. So Nopix, I did use it for uh, when something wouldn't read uh, data anymore. It was a disk recovery thing was based on Nopix, and I used the Nopix boot uh, to do that. That's what oh, I was yeah. wait a minute. Okay. I, uh, I have done the same thing, so I'm going to say I may have also used it without really, like, without really realizing, because you just, you know, use, use the thing. Um, we every now and again, every, you know, mo most people, right? Most of us at this point, I think probably have um, solid state drives, right? Um, but my tattoo artist, his machine was um, still spinning disc on his laptop and it he, he dropped it. So uh, you, you can guess what that meant for his uh, computer's ability to boot. Um, and uh, that one was tragic because i we were able to fix the computer by putting in a new solid state drive and getting that up and going for him but i couldn't get the data um even even with the the heavier utilities and um that you know like tattoo artists right that's their um like that art is everything the, the portfolio and everything that goes with that right that's 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 a big deal um but yeah so i think um, I, I will say that probably this, the, the utility that we were using to try to recover the data was, was probably the same one that you just mentioned. Not like, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yep. Um, the other one is, uh, Kali Linux is one that a lot of people I know really like, um, because, uh, it's great for capture the flag games. Um, so I'm not, I don't, who, I don't know who else plays capture the flag games. Um, but Kali Linux is really great for that. Like little cybersecurity capture the flag games. Red Hat's uh, cybersecurity team actually put one on the other year and that was really fun. Um, but there are other capture the flag games that can be participated in um, historically at DEF CON, but I don't know if they actually had any this year. Um, capture the flag games can be, can be very, um, very exciting. And so my husband is, uh, and my mentor, um, and they keep trying to get me to do it. And I keep trying to be like, no, I need a hobby that isn't computing. Um, 
so now I now I do fencing instead. Um, but they uh, they every so often, a couple times a year, participate in capture the flag games, and that's they they both have like dedicated Kali Linux boxes just dedicated to this. So, um, that's a pretty neat operating system, I think. Uh, it's very very good at what it does. Nobody else plays capture the flag. Not the kind you're talking about. I think more people more familiar with you know, the you know gaming consoles, capture the flag, and those kind of things, death matches. <laughs> um, I like capture the flag games because they're like puzzle games, right? You have to puzzle your way through hacking an application or figuring out where, um, you know what. Where, where where deliberate like bad file has been added. It's very similar to the the chaos engineering game that we do um, on the managed services because um, that's where I kind of stole the concept from. No, oh, wait, the wait. capture the flag in Unreal. What the heck is Unreal Tournament? Oh no, I knew you were going to say that. I started sensing that. If you don't know Unreal, so. <laughs> You know the Unreal Engine used for games and everything, right? So that was yes. the engine was built to make Unreal was actually a game similar like Doom, Quake. You know, uh, you go back far like Wolfenstein, whatever. Unreal came after I think just after Duke Nukem, or just after they started having Visa support for higher uh, resolution. I, I I think I broke our our get like our audience by not knowing that. Like I'm not. Um... I, I, not only do I still play Legends of Zelda, but I still play it on my Pikachu Nintendo 64. Uh, please understand that my involvement in video gaming did not extend past that. Which, by the way, my Nintendo 64 still works. Um, and I use it all the time. Uh, so that's that was like my gaming. Um, I can't actually play first-person shooters. I will get vertigo and throw up. <laughs> So I like um, all of that stuff. I, I, I tried playing. Um, it's escaping me. If we played World of Warcraft and one other one at the PC cafe when I was in high school. Uh, yes, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I have both of them. I play both of them. They both still work. Um, yeah, the reason you get sick playing those first person shooters is because of the Unreal Engine, because it's so realistic, it really does make you sick. Back in the Wolfenstein days, it was too choppy for you to get yourself sick, I think, most of the time. No, I can't, I can't even play Goldeneye on my Nintendo 64. Like, I oh. honestly, it's so, it's, I don't know what it is. Um, but so I've, I've always shied away from those. I, I played Halo for a very like brief period of time, right? Where you, you set up Halo to run on your on your PC and you get everybody going on with a LAN party via Hamachi and then you get to actually play like the capture the flag there. Um, yeah, you know that I was sick because I'm sick today because my webcam is mirrored. I'm staring very hard at Jesse so that I don't get that same vertigo. I don't know what it is. I get car sick if I'm driving. Like, you know how people be like, oh, I, I need to drive because otherwise I'll get car sick. No, I will get car sick even if I'm driving. I just like one of those terrible things that is like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm a mess, I guess. Um, but yeah, so my, my gaming, I really didn't play a lot of games outside of like, although I guess I also played RPG. Anything that was an RPG, I've probably played it. Um, <clears throat> let me go to the corner and get a rocket launcher. That's how you play on real tournament. Okay. I, I obviously I need to try this. Um, and um, this this Unreal Tournament thing. Obviously I need to try this. Uh, so no, but I I've I've only ever played like um, I have a, I have a dumb amount of consoles, right? I have every PlayStation except for the the five. Um, I, ha, I but so I played like all a lot of the Final Fantasies, um, like one and two. Um, obviously seven and eight. Um, I even played a little bit of nine. I brought when I borrowed it from my best friend. Um, Final Fantasy X, all of all of Kingdom Hearts. Um, like how 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 much of a like nerd am I? And like also how much of a child am I? And that like intersection that happens is Kingdom Hearts. 
Um, love Kingdom Hearts. I will die on that hill. It's fantastic. Um, right. So, you know, and uh, now, now I, now I have also been, pl I played Hades. Um, Hades is, is really fantastic game. Uh, we've completely like just, well, what is, what is Linux? What is OpenShift? We are discussing video games now, right? Like, this is what happens. Um, <laughs> I think I've like, just like, Dave has no respect for me anymore. He's gonna be like, why do I even look at this person? <laughs> she's, she's so deeply uncool. Um, I like Dave. I think he's great. I <laughs> <laughs> you would. Dave and I go way back, apparently, without knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> you and Dave, apparently, right? Um, so wait hang on sorry and think of your capture the five games and instead of move the proving ground to the financial markets and that's what high frequency trading is for real okay i feel like i missed some additional context there that might even just be talking about the um they might even be talking about the something the tournament stuff the the engine but anyway uh High frequency trading, like, 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 are you talking like stocks? Like, I'm cool. I'm really conf like, let's get back to Linux. I know something about this topic, <laughs> right? I know something, something about this Linux topic thing that we were, we were supposed to be on about. Um, also, Johnny is apparently watching today. Johnny is one of the hosts for Ask an OpenShift admin. Uh, and uh, what, why does he have to do topic planning? This is this is totally a good use of his time. Stay, Johnny. Don't go. Also, I need somebody in my corner, and I think maybe you will be. <laughs> is this going to devolve into a... Oh! No, it's not going to devolve into a Bitcoin debate. I don't hate myself that much. Jesse, where are your cats? Jamesy was here. He stood up for a little bit, but he left. He's now... He's, he's decided it was too much. He kept meowing. I had to mute because he was meowing too loud. I thought you would have heard him. No, I didn't hear him. Oh, I muted yeah. in time. Then. Yeah, no, that's funny. Uh, I, I appreciate the nod that Kingdom Hearts has a wild timeline. It does. It does. You, I don't actually play the game for the plot. I, can't, I play the game for the mechanics because the mechanics is let's just go hit everything with a big stick. Fantastic mechanic. I love it. <laughs> um... So yeah, um, Andrew, what was your first Linux build? I want to know that. I don't think you said it anywhere. Now I have to wait like the five minutes while the the restreaming and everything actually like captures the fact that he may or may not have responded. He may also just have run away like hiding now. Um, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, so I'm. <laughs> Man, Waleed, you're so mean to me. I thought you were my friend, dude. Everybody's like, it's getting up on Hillary Day. I mirrored my camera for you all again so that you could read my t-shirt. I'm never mirroring my display for you ever again, folks. This is, this is, this, you know, I'm going to put myself first instead. Again, not a team player. <clears throat> <laughs> not a team player. Rude. Wait, she does a Hollywood command in Linux. It makes it look like you're a hacker. They use it on TV shows and news shows sometimes. Wait, is this a real thing? I don't remember the Hollywood command, but I do remember when uh, in Jurassic Park, when they had that like 3D thrive, fly through the file system, I remember there was a tool where you could do that. You could fly through your directories and stuff just like it was. And it looked like it was on the movie, but I don't remember the name of that. That's fantastic. It's a real thing. That's amazing. Like, if I pull up my terminal right now, is that going to work? Not without rail. No. <laughs> I don't think she does. <laughs> uh, um, no, it's not going to just work. I can't. It doesn't find it. Um, you know what? That's actually as 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 like the older I get, the more per the more like persnickety I get about. Um, uh, representations of hacking in media, right? And you mentioned you have like a, a bit of a cybersecurity background, right? Prior to some of the work you've been doing with Red Hat, right, Jesse? So, like, you, you probably also get very annoyed by this. 
I can't watch any movies because they're never accurate. <laughs> Hate how inaccurate everything is. I'm trying to figure out if I can get Hollywood. Like, is there a package for it where I don't have to work? No. All right. I mean, I'm in. I'm already in still Hollywood now. Um, wait. Sorry, Stephanie is just reminding me that somebody is new here this week. Um, B Bureau. I hope I said that right. Bureau Zoli. Um, ah, she put it on screen. She's the best. I was looking at my terminal. Sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> I was trying to get Hollywood installed because I want I want to live this life. Um, so, um. But yeah, so thank you. I, there's a couple new new folks uh, here today. Like I said, Martin Martin uh, Jackson joined for the first time. Um, so th thank thank you for the new people. Like Stephanie will remind me to say, please like, subscribe, share. Um, normally, we actually talk about productive things instead of just geeking out about uh, what ended up being <laughs> really about video games. I think in the end is where we've gotten to. Um, so that we, uh, you know, have a. Uh, uh, you know, content that's actually generally useful, but we're we're being lazy today because of the fact that it's it's a birthday party. That's what we're doing here. That's I'm calling it a birthday party. Birthday party, social hour, informative stream, like big air quotes on that one. Um, it's also Jesse's birthday in two days, so we can really doubly call it a birthday party and like just like actually like solidly lean into that as if that's that's why we we just sat around and talked about nothing this time um <clears throat> but yeah no uh so uh we are coming down to the last seven minutes this has been i have been very deeply entertained this has been the highlight of my week uh just just uh talking about this stuff with with you folks um and um but now i really want to uh, go happy birthdays <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. What what's Mr. Robot about? Uh, so the answer is no. I don't watch TV. Not because I don't like TV. It's it's not anything like that. Like I, it, it, in theory, I love TV, right? Um, I have young children, and they monopolize the TV. And uh, when I'm done with my crazy work day, I go uh, actually spend time with my young children. So instead, I'm watching Coco for the five hundredth time, or sometimes and Kanto for the eighth time that day um so you know this is like the life of young children which i am attempting to live in the moment of uh so yeah and the, a lot of the things that i would really really want to watch are not kid shows so um God, Mr. How, okay but how not a kid show are we talking here like i do let my kids watch star trek like how how beyond Jesse's face. I'm trying to figure out how you even you use Star Trek as an example of not a kid show. I mean, Star Trek's easily a reasonable kid show. I think a lot of kids watch Star Trek. That's normal. That's true. Okay, so I have to watch Mr. Robot and I'll have redemption for my lack of Unreal Tournament. What if, what if, I don't know, like, I don't know anything about the Unreal Tournament thing. So, like, could we, like, just set up a game and play it with, like, somehow? Like, is that a thing that can be done? Is it, like, have, like, an online playing? Does it still exist in some way, shape, or form? Like, I don't know. Can I get my cred that way instead of watching a TV show? Jesse? <laughs> oh, you're asking me. I was asking you're asking everyone else. I, I'm sure there's got to be a way to be, get Unreal. It's so popular now. I'm, I'm sure we could get a setup installed and get people to play it together. It's too late. I'll never get to play You've it. You've already lost the respect. <laughs> I've already lost all the respect. There's no coming back. Johnny Johnny is revoking my alpha nerd status. My love of Pearl will never, never compensate for my lack of Unreal Tournament, I suppose. I, I can tell from your facial expressions, Jesse, that you are attempting to not give me grief, <laughs> and it just lean into it. Just give me all the grief. No, I'm I'm trying to be nice. I mean, I, so when I when I uh, started consulting or contracting uh, back after I moved down from Ohio in a computer store, uh, I the place I worked was Nielsen Media Research, and they uh, 
they met me when they fir first got there. They uh, they said that I was allowed to have my nerd card, but they took back my geek card because I didn't watch Star Trek. So I actually had to watch Star Trek just to make them happy. I, I, I hated it just because my brother watched it so much. It was not really a reason I didn't want to watch it. I just couldn't like the same show my brother did. So I've just seen this thing about your nerd card or whatever just reminded me of that. Yeah, no, it's uh, I, I'm I'm uh, now I'm I'm never I'm never going to uh, I'm never going to have the respect of the community ever again. <laughs> um, but that's all right. Um, uh, okay, we do have to wrap. I really don't want to because this has been fun, but uh, we actually have real jobs to do too. Um, so, uh, I don't know if Jesse has a Twitter. I don't know he doesn't. Um, but you can, uh, follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Um, again, the more likes and subscriptions we have, the, the more they let me do this. And I have actually like very good content planned out through the uh, rest of the quarter. So, um, Jesse will actually join us back again in two weeks to, um, uh, talk about um, how Essary uses GitOps to manage our RBAC and to do incident response. Uh, so this is a topic that I've touched on a little bit in previous streams. We're actually going to go ahead and do a deep dive into that because all of the OpenShift Essary RBAC is open source uh, and you can actually go have a look at it. So we're going to take you through a little bit of a tour of that and how we do how we do RBAC with GitOps. Um, and then also, like I said, incident response. So join us in two weeks for that. Um, Following up on that, we have some really cool stuff coming through, uh, some emerging technologies. Um, I'm not going to spoil it because I'm going to try to build more hype around it closer to episode time, which is a month from now, right? Um, and then uh, later on, we'll also have Martin Jackson uh, from the Validated Patterns team to come through about how um, how Red Hat is, is um, kind of trying to, uh, I guess, uh, define best practices in that space. and. Um, there's we're going to start off in uh how they're validated patterns for multi-cloud GitOps, which is very cool um or maybe we'll start off somewhere else that was what i asked for but we'll you know we'll, we'll let we'll let marty uh actually actually take us through that uh when the time comes um so and uh again for people who've been around for the stream a while uh don't ever hesitate to let me know something that you want to see on the stream if you want to see a technology covered or a guest show up or anything else like that i always like try to you know, keep those things in, um, in mind. So, uh, Jesse, do you want to sign off with any parting thoughts since I dragged you along for this ride? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's been fun. Uh, looking forward to talking to you again in a few weeks as well. Um, really love the, uh, the presence from the community out there, uh, in the chat. I honestly, that's some of the most fun <laughs> part of this is the, uh, the people, what they say and uh, interacting with them. So this has been great. Thank you for having me. Um, so I, I've, I've been informed that Jesse does have a Twitter um at jesse sarn so um but apparently he also doesn't tweet so that's about the same you could expect for me really like when do i tweet almost never i'll start posting stuff there more when i work with the special olympics and stuff i i, I was told that i should be putting that stuff on social media so i'll, I'll start using twitter uh, more for that work i do Can yeah absolutely 100 percent. and that's that's such cool stuff um i've i've seen the stuff you've done with the special olympics because of course we have a uh a, a, a co-working friendship relationship so um that's all really great um we did start on time we are top of the hour i know we have other things to do uh thank you everybody for hanging out with us today um and come back in two weeks for actually informative content that is useful to you and uh i hope you all enjoy kind of celebrating linux's 31st birthday today uh like i always say choose your technical debt wisely i'll see you in two weeks bye bye